Some people will run a 5K and some people will maybe stage a concert. How about walking hundreds and hundreds of miles for veterans? Hi again and welcome to Be Inspired. I'm Burt Barron. And I'm Lisa Anderson. And Be Inspired is an audio video podcast where we bring you real stories from folks just like you and I who share stories of love and loss, struggles and perseverance, laughter and tears, and of course, overcoming adversity. And Lisa, our guest this time around, literally has walked hundreds and hundreds of miles. He has an amazing story to share. And uh, it's so great to have our guest with us here this time. I have a a hard enough time walking around the block a couple times at night. And and when I first met you and heard what you did, I think it was a second year. Michael Downs, by the way. Welcome, Michael. Thank you. Yes, joining us. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for coming here. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's an honor to be here. Thank you. I think it's our honor because you, you stand out to me, and I'm not just saying this as one of the finest human beings I have ever oh, met and if you. I keep talking about it I'm going to start <laughs> crying so I don't want to talk too much about why I'm going to let you tell your story sure and you know you've got this beautiful wife and a and a son and the most beautiful dog which we'll meet in just we'll a bit meet her later yeah. Emery but I think it was a second year that uh, you and I spoke and it was you were going on your second walk mm-hmm. And it, it's all the way to tell us. Yeah, well, the first year I started from the Vietnam, I did Vietnam Veterans Memorial to Vietnam Veterans Memorial. Started off in the PNC Art Center, the, the one in Homedale, and walked. I mean, it's, it's nonstop. I don't sleep. I don't, it I mean, I stop to change socks, grab food, go to the bathroom. But it was a, a nonstop ruck march from Homedale to Washington, D.C. To, it's 200, oh, just under 250 miles. Um, it took me about three and a half days to do it. Um, and it was, it was extremely difficult, but I mean, every step of the way I used that, uh, as inspiration, as motivation to push because it it was supposed to be hard. It's supposed to symbolize what veterans that deal with post-traumatic stress disorder on a daily basis go through. So that's what was the motivation to keep going. I started the walk with two other guys. They, they couldn't continue after the first day. One guy got hurt. One guy just didn't want to do it anymore. I mean, you can't blame them because it's, it's, it, people don't realize that walking is very difficult for three days, four days in a row. It's very hard. Three hours. Sure. But, sure. Uh, I can't um, do it. But it's, it, it was meant to be that way. So. And I'm just, I'm just interested how a kid from New Jersey finds himself now doing all the remarkable things that you did, just uh, kind of growing up here and then living your life. And well, I always the, had an interest uh, in the military. I always had an interest in, in joining the military. Um, I, went to, I went to college first. My parents said, if you go to college first, and, um, then we'll support you if you want to go in the military afterwards. So I went wow. to college first, and, and then when I graduated, 9-11 happened. And then uh, I, I knew that that was what I was going to do. And um, I signed up. I enlisted. I didn't go officer. I enlisted in the in the U.S. Navy. Became a search and rescue swimmer. And within three months, I was off the coast of Iraq in 2003. Um, I did four years in the military and be in uh, you know two and a half deployments to Somalia, Liberia, wow. um, Iraq twice. So I mean, within four four years, two and a half deployments is pretty rough on somebody. Um, and yeah. it just shows you that that's. That's really nothing compared to what these guys go through today. Some guys are doing six, seven multiple deployments, combat deployments in their in their military careers, and uh, um, but people don't realize that that their guys still there. Yeah, They're, we still I know. have soldiers overseas. Deployed. How many years later is this? Yeah, it's. I mean, it's twenty yeah. some years. It was, <sighs> wow, I mean, we, that's we crazy. were there in 2000, uh, 2002. Wow. That's when we first uh, our you know the first uh, combat um, deployment started. Sorry, yeah. she's. That's okay. Yeah, this it, is Emery. So. Yeah, this is Emery. Have you met Emery I have. before? Oh, sure, She's sure. Best. She's special. Yeah. She accompanies you on your walk, but we'll talk more about the walk in just a bit. Sure. But um, would do you think that there should be a limit on deployments for guys? Because the reason you do your walk is to help veterans with PTSD, and we got to get into how serious. I know there's a lot of talk about PTSD, but hearing it from someone firsthand – when you came back, what was life like for you? There's no – well, when I got out of the military, there's no transition period. There's no – all right, this is what you what you might experience. This is what you might deal with. Um, there's none of that. So when I got out, I, I had no clue what I was going through. And I think it's changed now. I was – I got – I, um, I got out in 2006. And uh, as soon as I came home, 
I started experiencing, you know, difficulties with crowds, difficulties with, uh, you know, just being in public in general. Uh, I was angry a lot. Um, I couldn't watch TV. I couldn't watch the news. I couldn't, uh, you know, just see if I saw like a recruiting commercial from the military. I wanted to go back in. Wow. It triggers. Yeah, yeah, it triggers you. And I didn't know what, it, what I was going through. I knew that some of the stuff that I saw was, uh, you know, it was going to change you, but I had no idea it was going to change me that much. And I, uh, I, like I said, I knew something was wrong, but I didn't know exactly what was, I was going through. I thought PTSD was if you heard a loud noise and you jumped and you, and you, look, and you jumped under a table. That's what it was. Yeah. I had no idea. And I didn't have that. I didn't have that, uh, that startle response. Maybe because of response. the Navy. Yeah, I mean, I, I, was, I was in combat once. I saw, I saw the after effects of it. But, uh, you know, I was never, you know, you know, getting shot out every day and stuff like that. But it was, you know, some guys hear loud noises, can't deal with fireworks. I could deal with fireworks. They can't hear, you know, if a car backfires or something like that, they freak out and jump under a table. I never had that. And that's what I thought it was when I first came out. But then, you know, I became a police officer in 2008. And seeing and doing the things, you know, police officers do. It just, it wasn't a good mix for me. It was, you know, mm. I was triggered with a lot of stuff and uh, coming home, I would take my work home. I began drinking alcohol to put it away and, and I was never a drinker. I was just, uh, you know, dealing with it, using alcohol to deal with this stuff because it worked. Numbing, I mean, it yeah. worked, but numbs it and, and, and uh, but. Um, so kind of just the opposite, Michael, because a lot of times I'll hear that veterans make not only great civil servants after they come back from deployment, but they make great employees. They appreciate <laughs> a schedule. Yeah. They're prompt. They're polite. They're on time. They're hardworking. And you would think that it would be just maybe a natural move for someone who was uh, with a military background to go into law enforcement. It seems right. like a perfect mix. Yeah. But when you think about it, you start mixing in uh, the, co- the confrontation aspect of being a police officer and the, the moments of craziness that make up 0.001% of being a cop because most of it, most of the time, there's not too much going on. Just to be able to deal with those moments of, of like absolute insanity are the are the ones that are really kind of make or break and ptsd is is a factor in that yeah it's 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 different the training is different from the military to law enforcement in the military there's you could do certain things to someone who attacks you and as a cop you can't mm. um but uh, you, can't, it's not, you can't just turn it on and turn it off once it's it's there it's there you know what i mean it's it's hard for someone to to have military training to to take a life is what i'm trying to say you you can't you, you know how to do it. You know how to do it easily. But when you, as a police officer, you can't do that. Sure. So it's hard to turn that on and off. And, I mean, I, some guys have, have great careers coming out of the military in law enforcement. Mm-hmm. But, you know, for me, it wasn't it wasn't a good mi- you mix for me. You needed something. Yeah, yeah, I needed something else. So. And you were married at the time, correct, when you were going through this? I was. I got married um, a month uh, before I, I graduated the police academy. So, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it was tough. It was tough. It was definitely tough. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I I mean, when you when you meet a veteran that goes through this stuff, you got to look at the family because it affects the family just as much as it affects the individual. Yeah, it really does. I'm sure. And you have you had a young son, you know, was yeah, we had a young son in 2013. um, uh, And it was difficult because a lot of the a lot of traumas that I dealt with in, in my service revolved around children. So every time I'd hear my my son cry or scream it would bring me back and it was hard for me to deal with with him growing up and and taking care of him and trying to put all that stuff behind me when it was just it was brought right in front of me all the time see we hear a lot about ptsd but sure. to hear the instances and, and what triggers you is by my own admission i have uh, uh, just a small fraction of the understanding of what it's all about I so know, when you hear too. some from someone that's yeah I wouldn't that, even that, think that deals that. with it that wrestles yeah. with it i think that's important so what what inspired you to, to take these experiences michael and use them now to, to raise awareness and to help other people was there a point where you said i need to do something to help? yes absolutely i mean i was uh i was struggling big time I, one of the one of the big things i was struggling with was my lack of service i wasn't I wanted to go back in the military. I've tried a whole bunch of times to go back in, and um, it just it just didn't work out, which is a good thing, I think. But uh, I needed something to feel like I was serving again. And when I reached out for help, I knew it was either I get help or I'm not going to be here much longer. So um, I reached out and got help myself and realized how expensive it is. I mean, I went – I didn't go through the VA for help. I went through uh, you know, a, private, pri- a privatized place and just saw how much it costs. And I was very fortunate enough to have – a family member who helped me pay for it. So I was very fortunate to see 
what it takes to get the help that that someone who has PTSD to to, to get. And um, once I saw how much it was, I, I, when I was in training, uh, uh, I'm sorry, not in training, in uh, in residential treatment. Mm -hmm. When I was in treatment, I saw um, just how how motivated the people that are down in Florida that they deal with this stuff every single day. Yeah. And um, un unfortunately, my my first therapist when I was down there just recently committed suicide. <gasps> so they deal with it every day oh and it's i mean it's, it's but uh, once i saw that once i i saw the um the work that they put into it i needed to do something myself and i needed to feel like i needed to serve again so i came up with this idea to to walk non-stop to washington because <laughs> <That's> <laughs> no one's ever done it. Before. i still can't get over that i know <laughs> no one's ever done no. it before <laughs> a difficult I time imagine and, you know when i go to wildwood to exactly. get from the boardwalk to the water <laughs> exactly. so i, I want to come back and yeah. talk about the mission of unbroken warriors and I want to learn about the, the physical preparation. And there's mental preparation, too, Michael, to be able to execute this. I want to talk about that as well. And uh, can we say hello to the, your, your, your dog, your best Absolutely. friend yes. in the next segment, too? Absolutely. Can we do yeah. that? Yes. All right. More coming up with Michael Dowens on a very special Be Inspired. Freestyle Marketing. For all of your marketing and promotional needs, follow or direct message Wendy for great ideas and first-class customer service. Contact Wendy at freestylemarketing.com. Moving is difficult. At Lowy's, it doesn't have to be. For all of your residential and commercial needs in central New Jersey, contact Lowy's Moving Service at 732-775-4118. That's Lowy's. IGA Nothropathy Foundation of America is a 501c3 nonprofit organization dedicated to finding a cure for IGA kidney disease. If you or someone you know was recently diagnosed, please visit IGAN.org or contact 732-770-7377. Also, thanks to Chain Gang Pro Performance Clothing, a new local company focused on providing active wear for your active moments. Check out their story and line of products at ChainGangPro.com or follow their journey on Instagram or Facebook by searching Chain Gang Pro. We are back with Michael Dowens here on this episode of Be Inspired. And uh, Michael, before we talk about Unbroken Warriors, and I'd love to know how you mentally and physically prepare yourself for these walks to, you know, Washington, D.C., hundreds of miles oh away. Uh, you have a very special companion in this lifetime who makes a world of difference for you. Talk about your special co-star you brought along with <laughs> you today. Sidekick. This, my sidekick, yes. She, this is Emery. Come here. Yay. Come here. My lap. My lap. This is Emery. There she is. Yeah, this Hi, is her. Emery. She goes with me oh, everywhere I go. Oh. Uh, yeah, she calms me down if I need it. Um, Everybody needs an Emery in their yeah, life. Yeah, Emery I think. was. Emery is specially trained. Uh, she keeps me. Uh, she's specially trained just for me. So if she can pick up on, you know. <laughs> actually, she picks up off the pheromones I give off. If I'm having, you know, if I'm nervous or if I'm having a panic attack, uh, you know, stuff like that, she's able to calm me down by doing what she did at the beginning of the interview. When you started, the minute you started talking about 9-11, it was like her ears went up and she yeah. sat up and started. She, she knows yeah. that once I'm, I'm, I start, I get upset and stuff like that, she's, she forces me to pet her. And that, I mean, how can you get mad petting, oh, a, you know, a dog? So yeah. that's, that's what, uh, that's her purpose. And um, wow. she's, she's amazing. She, she was a, a rescue Christy. from Georgia. She was actually, oh, uh, you know, she's been abused. She's been shot a couple times by BBs oh, and she's got some what? BBs lodged in her, but you would never know. I mean, oh my that's what the program does down there. They, they rescue the dogs, train them, and then they give them the vets. So it's like a win-win. That is Both the veterans incredible. win and the dogs get a second chance at life. So How, when did you get her, Michael? I got her on uh, Halloween, October 16, 2016. Oh, and can she, can she tell when you're gearing up for a, yeah. uh, for a walk? She yeah, yeah. Can she tell? She doesn't. She like, doesn't here we like go it. again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's like, she's not, she's like, come on, really? But I, I don't take her on the whole thing i mean i usually take her the first day yeah. and usually finish the walk with her but it's uh, tough for her. yeah i wouldn't want yeah. i wouldn't want Peter to be all over me but uh yeah preparation for you uh, for this michael this is this is not for everybody uh, um, this is like doing crazy. uh a, a, a hundred decathlons or a hundred ultra marathons this is not just for anybody uh, what you put yourself through and when you do these walks I always follow you on social media, yeah. and I'll get these middle of the night posts where it's like, "Where is he walking I now?" Know. Three a.m. Just, just to get ready for this, mentally yeah. and physically, walk us through what it takes to just to just get out there and get started. Well, you'll be surprised. No, I don't do any physical training for it. I just get out there and go. I mean, I, I the first year I did it, I had no idea it was going to be that tough. 
I just said, well, it's just walking. But really? I walk I mean, all the time. How yeah, hard could it be, right? Could it I'll be. just keep I'll walking, just right? Keep, keep walking. Oh but my gosh. Uh, I mean, the, the weather is a big factor. I mean, I get rained on a lot, and uh, that gets my my feet get soaking wet, and that's when toenails start falling off. They're still falling off. They're right? still falling off. I lost still. one. Wow. I have three toenails <laughs> three. that are gone. Um, one just fell off about a week ago. So. <sighs> It's, I have, you know, plantar fasciitis, I have bone spurs, you name it, I have it. But uh, um, I, I, I will continue to do this until I can't do it anymore. Hello, just give you a quick update. I'm still in Annapolis walking. It's about 2.30 in the morning. Yeah, I'm still moving. Just want to give you guys a quick update. And I will check in with you guys maybe about two hours, an hour, something like that. Let you guys know I'm still breathing. Okay, we're getting soaked. We're just outside Philadelphia and it never fails no matter how many times I do this walk, it always pours on me. But it doesn't matter because we're doing this to help people. I mean, it's just something that I will continue to do. Uh, I, I, I feel like it's part of, of what I have to do now because I made it home. I got the treatment. I got the therapy that I needed. And now I'm doing it for the guys that, that are out there that feel alone it felt the same way i did that felt the same you know there's 22 veterans that commit suicide a day yeah and that's that's not a number that those are actual people yeah. and i was one of them and i don't want guys that are going through what i went through the moment where i was at that situation to feel what i felt there's there's so many ways to get help there's so many avenues out there there's so many nonprofits. there's there's the va there's so many things that that are that are out there for these guys just to, to say, look, I'm not alone, that um, there's there's guys out there dealing with, and girls out there dealing with the same thing that I'm dealing with. And it sounds like that's what inspires you on these long, dark, rainy stretches of this walk, that it's like, yeah. for them, let, yeah. let, let me keep going. Let me just take one more step for them and just continue and press on. And that's what motivates you until there's daylight. The sun is up, and yeah. now I'm going to really, absolutely, really knock out a bunch of uh, of distance here. Uh, but you, there, there are dark moments. There has to be, and that inspires you to keep going, right? Yeah, I mean, there's there's plenty of times during my walk where I'm like, let me just Uber. No one will know. <laughs> but I, I mean, it's it's you, you don't because you know what you're doing it for, and wow. um, every it just if I let me just walk five more miles and then I'll sit down. Or let me just walk another hour and I'll sit down. You know, in the service there are no shortcuts, of course. Exactly. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and there's as I'm walking, I know that there's guys out there that are struggling at that exact moment. So, yeah. and not only that, but you went through some pretty tough areas too. I think you walked straight yes. through tr- I, the middle of Trenton, middle of Trenton at on night a, on a Thursday night. Yeah, which is not fun. Um, no. I walked through Baltimore. I walked through uh, North Philadelphia, which I don't know how I made it out of there. But wow. I, I met the wow. most interesting, nicest people in those areas that just want to know what I'm doing. They give me the change in their pockets. They give me, you know, wow. support. And they offer, for, you know, for me to stay at their house, to, you know, take a shower, anything. But uh, you meet the nicest people on these walks that you wouldn't expect. But um, it's, it's definitely, it, it helps me out because I see, you know, I meet, especially when I meet like an older veteran from Vietnam or something oh, like that, yeah. that are like that, that come up to me and say, what are you doing? Uh, you know, you got, cause I carry this huge flag. Yeah. Um, and they want to know what, you know, what, what I'm doing. And I, once I tell them, they were like, they, some guys salute, some guys stand at attention. Uh, and I, and I always take pictures of them and post them on there so people can know this is their story too. That, uh, that's, that's what they did, de- that yeah. they dealt with. And, and only someone who's gone through that experience yes. can really relate to you can really understand that it. I mean, level it, right and like we said before veterans aren't the only individuals that get yeah. ptsd right i mean you could be in, in a car crash and have ptsd That's right cops you, people understand that, that law enforcement have ptsd firefighters first mm-hmm. responders all these all these 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 yeah. professions can get it yeah. anybody can get it not just veterans so any it, it physically changes you know the, the makeup of your brain so yeah. Um, anybody could have it again no, this no, no, note to self if Michael ever calls us up and says hey you want to go for a walk no. <laughs> I don't want to go I'll meet you maybe three blocks that's from fine. Washington that's, that's, that'll work what goes through your mind when you're when you're arriving at the Vietnam Veterans Memorial with your flag and it's been three and a half days and your feet are completely demolished the first year I was surprised and met with a whole bunch of people that I knew down there I had wow. no idea they were going to be down there they surprised me um, it was it was so motivating to see people that I haven't seen in, in 20 years. Uh, my old college football coach showed up, and wow. I haven't seen him in forever. 
um, college friends of mine, uh, a, a guy I served with showed up. It was it was That's just so funny. motivating and so inspiring to see people that, because uh, I don't I don't do social media. I don't, my wife does all that stuff, so right. I don't see the you know the, the the followers and stuff like that. So there were a lot this year, yeah. by the way. You raised. Uh, uh, hopefully a good amount of money and this is why Michael does it two at a time two of your veteran friends were really in dire straits yeah we had two two yeah. veterans that needed help uh, one of them backed out of tr uh, treatment didn't want to go oh. um, we, we sent the other one we have another one lined up right now so all right so hopefully you made a good amount of money and that's what it's all about unbroken warriors yeah, yeah. there org. was uh, you yeah. did something with uh, I think it was East Brunswick VFW or I don't yes. recall if you started there or ended there but I remember talking to some of the veterans who were there that were so honored that you chose their location yeah. there in uh, in Middlesex yeah. County as the either your your end point or your start point. You probably see this from a lot of the veterans groups. They're all pulling for you, Michael. Yeah, they, they have really to be. Are. They really are. And that's why I, 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 the first, the second walk I did, I, I finished at the East Brunswick. That's right. That, that's yeah. right. Okay. This year I started there. Okay. They, I've never met a post that does so much for, I mean, the commander there is amazing. His name is Tommy Kuhill. He does I mean, he, he will go out in the middle of the night if he hears a veteran who needs help, and he'll give him the shirt off his back. He does so much for veterans that, uh, you know, it, I needed to start and end there for, you know, f just for that purpose. And um, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> there she goes again. Yeah, I, but, uh, I'm dying to pet her, and I didn't know that you're not supposed to she's, pet she's service working, dogs. Working, this is yeah. serious business, Lisa, Sorry. that she's doing. So. really want to give her a big exactly. hug and can't uh, take her home. Michael, someone wants to try something similar. Maybe they want to do a walk of their own. They like what you're doing. Um, do they contact you? Do you have some words of inspiration for them? Yeah, you know what? Actually, I did have someone who did uh, who did that. He's, his father was in Ground Zero and wanted to honor wow. his dad, and uh, he walks every year from, from Holmdale to, to Ground Zero in the 9-11 the Memorial. And he gives to the proceeds to Unbroken Warriors. So wow. that's great. It's uh, yeah. He that's I was incredible. like, just you know, keep your feet dry. We're you know, bring lots of socks and powder. Um, but uh, yeah, UnbrokenWarriors.org is you can reach out to me. You can get in touch with me there. Um, just uh, you know, I just want veterans to know, uh, you know, you're not alone, and you're never ever. I mean, there's there's one famous veteran that always says this, um, Marcus Luttrell. He always says, you're never out of the fight, and you truly aren't. You, no matter how bad you feel, how low you're down, how alone you feel, you know, you're never out of the fight, no matter, um, you know, how bad it gets. So well, I just need, need them to know that. Do you think PTSD awareness has changed over the past five, ten years? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It definitely has. And, and, and that's one of the, not only raising funds, but we want to spread awareness as much as we can to get people, because some people have no idea. No. And I mean, just like when I, like I got out of the military, I had no idea what PTSD was. So that's what we want to do. We want to educate, spread awareness, and, uh, you know, 100% of what we raise goes to the veterans. I don't take a paycheck. I don't pay anybody. Um, I use a lot of my money, uh, my own money, to, you know, buy T-shirts and stuff like that. So everything we, we raise, 100% of it goes to the veterans. So um, it's just what we do. See, that Lisa Lieutenant Dan was right. What's the first thing he told Forrest Gump? Take care of your feet. Take oh, care. That's he was right. right. Clean that's socks right. every day, right? Michael Dowens, thank you. Continue thank you to inspire much. so many people, and thank you for being here today and, uh, and continue oh, to success. Oh, truly an honor thank to be you. here. Thank you. It's thank our you. honor. Thanks thank for coming much. on, Michael. I'm Burt Barron. And I'm Lisa Anderson. And thank you for watching Be Inspired. Next on Be Inspired. What should have been a case of dehydration led to a, an ER trip. You know, it was great to see the kids rejoice and, and have a Christmas. And that was my gift. That's so nice. And they gave that to us. Uh, and they didn't have to, but they did. March 3rd, we got up just like any other day. She passed away. Told my son, hardest thing I've ever had done in my life. And as luck would have it, I was having a heart attack. Next episode on Be Inspired. Be Inspired Podcast, directed by Rod Weber. Production assistant, Carlo Anthony. Post-production editor, Rebecca Gruber. Be Inspired, with your hosts, Lisa Anderson and Burt Barron. Co-producers, Lisa Anderson and Erwin Sternberg. Executive producers, Rod Weber and Sean M. Sternberg. Created and produced by Michael R. Doyle.